Library corners. These are corners that are turned in without cutting away any of the material. They are rather unattractive and bulky, but they do eliminate any possibility of the material fraying. Laura Young. The corner treatment is known as the universal corner. It's not an elegant method, but it's hard wearing and will not burst open on impact. Arthur Johnson. Young and Johnson are not complimentary about the looks of the library corner, but they both agree it adds durability. We're all familiar with the mitered corner with cloth where you trim the cloth at 45 degrees, one and a half board thicknesses away from the corner of the board. The head and tail are turned in first and then the foredge. This results in a small overlap of the cloth, holding the cloth firmly closed and protecting the vulnerable tip of the corner. The minimal overlap means there's only a very thin bump on the foredge and a slight overlap on the inside of the board. Some people debulk the inside overlap by cutting through both materials after turning in and removing the underlying layer. I prefer not as the overlap helps hold the joint together. The sharp tip of the board corner should be trimmed slightly or just rounded before turning in when doing library corners. No material is removed and the corner of cloth is folded back at 45 degrees over the board. Then the head or tail and foredge are turned in. The order doesn't matter in this case. Because of the bulk of the material, especially if you're th using a thicker covering material, it can take a bit of work to get the turn in to stay down. A strong, fast tacking glue is an advantage. After doing the turn ins, a good nip in the press is also a good idea. If you have pressing tins, now is a good time to use them as they give a solid surface at the squares and stop an impression of the library corner transferring into the text paper. When should you use library corners? The first time I saw a library corner in the wild was when I had my thesis bound in the mid 90s. Historically, library corners have been used on books which were expected to receive heavy use, such as library books. I don't think anyone expects their thesis to be heavily used, but they are submitted to the university library. Johnson uses library corners in the library style binding using split board attachment and full cloth covering. I think they're good on any book you expect to be heavily used, such as reference books and stationary binding. Both Young and Johnson were huge names in book binding in the 20th century and were part of the transition into the modern era of designer book binding, but they were still strongly influenced by the aesthetic of the trade dominant period. In the 19th century, the fashion was to hide the construction of the book fill in and line and smooth so no lumps and bumps show that indicate how a book is constructed. Today we often celebrate the details of how a book is made, going to some lengths to do this such as using cutouts to allow the sewing to be seen on the spine. In this aesthetic the library corner might be seen as both robust and a decorative element. Long live the library corner! I hope you found something useful in today's video. As always, I really appreciate you hitting the big thumbs up button. If you're able and want to, you can support the making of more videos like this through Patreon or with a one-off contribution, and the details are in the description below. If you want to be notified of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button. Until next time, cheerio. Bye.